Radical. Episode 155. Welcome to Radical, ladies and gents. I'm your host, Shane Hazel. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening. I am going to give you guys a couple of different shows this week in an effort to kind of give you guys a glimpse into a lot of the other things that I do you know, uh, doing you know what we are doing here in this liberty space. Uh, I do a lot of interviews that I think a lot of you guys uh, probably don't get to see. And I mean, if you're in the podcast space and you're trying to to really get your name out there, is like, man, go do podcasts, go meet people, go have conversations. That is, I think, probably one of the keys. Uh, that I would, you know, encourage you to take advantage of, man. Somebody wants to talk to you and wants to give you their platform for a while to introduce you to their audience. I think that's a really neat thing, whether it's, you know, those people coming to you directly um, or coming through, you know, people in their uh, audience requesting that they have people on. And so if you get those requests, I highly, highly encourage you to go out there and, and have those conversations, whether they're, you know, people who are like-minded or people who want to have discussions and debate. It'll sharpen your skills. Uh, it'll get your name out there. It's free publicity. And, you know, if you've got a good product and a good pitch and all that kind of stuff for yourself, obviously, um, you've got a real chance to pick up people along the way. And I, you know, I, that's what I contribute a lot of, uh, this audience too. And I, I can't thank you guys enough, you know, wherever you found me for, for being out there. Um, admin, uh, first, before we get into the show, uh, if you love the show and you want to become a patron and support us, you can go to patreon.com slash radical pod, uh, for as little as a dollar, you can become a patron. Thank you guys who have, um, if you guys would like to support the show in other ways and you don't have a lot of money, you can go to Apple podcasts and leave a review there. Uh, I will read it here on the air. Five stars. Thank you guys for all doing that, and uh, I really, really appreciate it. So I want to give you guys a, a glimpse at kind of what's happening here uh, this week. Um, this week, Thursday night, mark your calendar, I will be on with Tim Cast, Tim Pool, uh, and the the gang up there. Uh, I am, I'm super excited about it. I've, uh, I've been recovering from another back incident this this weekend man I went in and I rolled on uh on Saturday man and just we were doing these sweeps and I'll tell you you know backs and sweeps especially with a big dude uh who was my partner it is recipe for disaster so I've, I've been doing everything I can to rehab to to make sure that I can get up there uh and do uh the podcast with him but uh this week uh while I was kind of you know I, I, Trying to think of some other things to show you guys. I got the invites um, from a couple of different podcasts, and I'll uh, reveal the other one later in the week. It'll be the other show. But this week, I got to go and hang out with a couple of guys from Canada. Uh, their names are Carl Flurry and Jean-Marc Michaud. And, um, you know, these guys come from kind of the, what they call, you know, the, the People's Party. But in Canada, the People's Party isn't synonymous with socialism or communism or fascism. Um, it's actually a rising movement in the space of liberty in Canada. Um, and, you know, some of the things that have been happening up there um, with their elections and everything else have given me, uh, I don't know, a, a lot of optimism for people in Canada um, to see the rise in... Places even like Quebec, which are, you know, still, you know, obviously, uh, you know, subjects of the crown, to, to put it lightly, you know, like they, they still believe in uh, the monarchy a bit and all that, you know, stuff that is, you know, a bygone era. But for these guys to come out and ask me to come on the show, um, I was really, uh, I, I didn't, you know, at first I didn't know that they were Canadian. And to be able to sit here and have a conversation um, I think this may be the first podcast that I've done uh, with people internationally, and I think it's a it was a you know a great time to be able to sit down and hang out and explain some of the things that are happening not only uh, in you know in America but here in Georgia as well, and kind of get a perspective from them as well on you know how you know Canada is going. It's not great, but there's still hope. Um, so. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, and later in the week, I will uh, get you guys another podcast that's already been recorded, 
um, with a, a great, great guy, which I'm going to leave it as a cliffhanger, you know, leave you guys out there so that you come on back later in the week. But uh, without further ado, I hope you enjoy this interview with the guys from Chance of Flurry. Yeah, yeah, I'm up. Sweet. All right. So, yes, thank you very much again, Shane Hazel, for, <laughs> for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Again, uh, we're, you're, you're helping us out as a small channel. Oh, my uh, pleasure. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, so Shane, uh, a, uh, a Marine <laughs> and he's, uh, and you're also, uh, you ran for Senate, uh, in the, uh, uh, representing Georgia. That's, that's, is that correct? Yeah. I've, uh, I've run for U S Senate, uh, in 2020 and 2018, I ran for U S house, um, two time loser, man. And so <laughs> as a libertarian, you have to, uh, to ex- expect like, uh, something, but I mean, that's, that's nothing to be ashamed of. You're trying and I appreciate it. Oh, right, thank and, you very uh, much. I go on Twitter and I see Governor 2022. Is that so? Is that you're 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 aiming for that? Yeah, yeah. that's on the horizon. Yeah, I've got to I've got to go out and uh, win the Libertarian nomination first, and once I win that, then I guess it's off to the races at that point. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Duck Speaker says, "Welcome, uh, Mr. Hayes, down with the murder cult." This is what he says. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so, uh, just start off here, your, your show, he, again, duck speaker, uh, uh, introduced me to your show. I love your show. I do. I'm, I subscribe now and I, I and I watch mm-hmm. it. I, I like your style and, uh, your show's called radical. Your first episode, you say you're mm-hmm. a radical and, uh, and I, I tend to agree with that. I feel like the establishment is also radical and to oppose that you all, you kind of have to be a radical as well. Um, but so what, what's your take on. Uh, explain how you how you're a radical well i i think you know uh it, it was one of those things that kind of came around in terms of naming the show um that i was being labeled by my government uh to begin with right As somebody who's talking about peace and liberty and consent in all things including your interactions with the state um it we if we, we you know former vet um you know that's that's speaking out against the uh, what I call the murder cult, which I'll define as the the upper echelon of the government uh, officials, the banking cartels, and uh, obviously uh, corporate, uh, you know, just corporate industries, right? And so I, I think, um, you know, speaking out against these things and having seen some things, you know, um, as somebody who's seen, you know, life uh, on the, the sharp side of the American military, right? And um, to, to be able to have some experience in those realms and understand what their, uh, modus operandi is, uh, and then counter them, uh, with everything that they taught me, plus what I learned on the battlefield overseas. It's like, uh, yeah, man, uh, I'm, a, you know, it's, it's considered radical by my own government. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I kind of just adopted it and said, cool, man, you guys want to make me a radical I'm going to make sure that your life is absolute hell on earth as long as you're, you know, going out and caging and killing and harassing uh, peaceful people. And so that's uh, that's how Radical came about. That's how the name came about. And, yeah, I think in this world, um, it, we're getting to that point where people who are speaking about these things were obviously in the minority And it is the root. It is, you know, radical just means grasping at the root. And what we're grasping at the root of is individual liberty. We've always had, you know, states and monarchies and control of other people's lives. So to be able to um, stand in, you know, stark opposition to that and, uh, you know, human history, I think, is the more radical position. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Well, especially nowadays. I mean, it shouldn't be, but that's that's the standard we've set for ourselves. Unfortunately, um, I know your key messages are like to end the wars and the Fed, you know, and the empire. Basically, you know, you're you're running it for the Mises caucus, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. M- Mises caucus. More, yeah. more of like the more of an anarchist than than you would say a libertarian, or like how do you see yourself? So, I, I think this is. A great question, first and foremost, because I don't think it's given enough time uh, or thought. Yes, I I am definitely um, more of an anarchist and an anarchist by definition. Right. And, and I think controlling yeah. 
uh, the language is one of those things where we have to be very accurate in, in the language we use, right? So uh, anarchy just means no rulers. And so by definition, it enjoys neutrality uh, to begin with. And so if it enjoys neutrality, it's not good or bad. It's what you make of it. And the, the natural human condition on earth is you're born free. So um, I didn't, I wasn't in an overnight um, anarchist, right? And I don't know that it's for everybody. And the thing is, is anarchists don't want to force everybody to be anarchists, right? We're, yeah. we're those people that are like, oh, cool. Well, you want to be in a commune? Cool. Go be in a commune. Just make it, you know, so that it's consentful where if somebody doesn't want to be there, they can leave or, yeah. you know, whatever their contract is to be part of that commune. You want to be a corporatist? Cool. Go be a corporatist, but don't make anybody be there um you know under you know anything but their own consent and it's the same thing with us it's like you know anarchists allow for others to exist whereas a lot of times what we're seeing now especially here in the united states uh you've got fascists on the right side of thing quote unquote the right side and you've got yeah. the communists on the left side and basically they're represented by the republicans and democrats and it doesn't matter they're both authoritarian so at the mm -hmm. end of the day i really don't care you know who or what they are it's that hey you guys want to control my life in some way and you're threatening me to do the things that you guys want to do um and i don't know like i i got to the point where you know, I was a neocon, obviously, as a Marine, uh, ran off to war and special operations and all that. And then uh, thank God for John Taylor Gatto and my buddy who put his book on my my bed when I was overseas, because that started me down this path um, of education. And I found yeah. that the more knowledge I had um, and real based in, you know, natural truth and natural principle, the closer I was becoming getting to individual liberty on you know on a scale and i think anarchy is just as far as you can get towards freedom um and i don't know like that's that's the kind of the life i'm trying to to not only give to myself but to at least give other people the opportunity to strive towards it's not easy obviously yeah, uh, like for us, uh, we started this podcast uh, something like a year ago, a little over a year ago, and we we would describe ourselves as kind of conservative or libertarian, but more we 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 um, we kind of scoffed at the idea of um, uh, abolish the police when it first came up. Uh, you know, we were making fun of that, but then the more when this lockdown happened, this for me at least, I'll speak for myself. The lockdowns is what got me really going with the uh, the um, voluntarism and tr and and anarchy really like you just described and uh, i consider myself more of a I, I lean between libertarian and and anarchist but that's what did it for me it's the lockdowns it's the the the, the mandates of the vaccines and whatnot um are, are you saying that that for you that was maybe your time as a marine uh, there was just some, what what did it for you uh, to, to that that made you become you said it was a, you know, it wasn't an overnight process. Uh, yeah, no, man. And, and that's the thing is, you know, um, 2004 to 2021, I'm actually writing a, uh, a little article for Keith Knight right now. Um, and it's, it's talks about this exact thing. Um, you know, at first uh, it was John Taylor Gatto and I kind of knew that I needed to question things. Prussia um, had a bunch of Fabian socialists in it in the late 1700s. And they set up this, um, you know, this, this indoctrination system for the people of Prussia so that they were of like culture, that they had obedient soldiers and they had a populace that spoke the same language and sh shared culture and really kind of agreed on the way things should work, or at least what they were indoctrinated with. Um, mm -hmm. And Horace Mann uh, was one of the first people to go over, check it out and say, Hey, you know, we need to implement this in the United States. So um, Prussia's school model has really uh, done wonders all over the earth for socialism, communism, statism. And uh, to see a 30 year veteran of the school system teach uh, people the history of centralized, you know, government forced youth indoctrination camps, you know, you're sitting there going, wow, man, like I, most people are predisposed to hear that message because you're going, yeah, man, like I think 90 something percent of people went 
to some type of government school at one time. So uh, that started me off, found Ron Paul. Uh, I became, you know, a, a constitutionalist, like literally kind of dove into the Federalist, uh, learned the mechanics of how the Constitution worked, really almost memorized the Constitution from front to, uh, to back. And then I found the anti-Federalist that blew that idea out of the water uh, and obviously, um, you know, taught that the, the Federalists were a bunch of commies, basically a bunch of, uh, you know, guys that wanted to centralize power uh, for uh, the what they called the aristocratic combination. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for for me, you know, when I had learned that everything that I had already learned, you know, the what I thought was bedrock for America was just a coup. Oh, man, I had like my brain was leaking out my ear, guys. And so, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Just, like your, your paradigm, you know, you have to be that person that's willing to shatter your own paradigm. And then you kind of got to get to that point where you're like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Right. Because after you see a couple of times where it gets shattered, you're like, oh, what's next, man? What's on the plate? And you start to think about the major institutions in your life. Like, what's next? OK, well, the Fed. Right. Like if you mm -hmm. read the creature from Jekyll Island. And you start getting into, you know, li like Lysander Spooner helped at, with the Anti-Federalists after, you know, I got done with the Anti-Federalists and kind of like, I didn't sign a contract. Did you sign a contract? Cool. <laughs> then I, I like, I don't know you anything. And then um, with, you know, with economists, you know, economics and one lessons kind of where I started. And I was, I was daunted by the prospect of learning economics. But, you know, once you, you know, read The Creature yeah. from Jekyll Island, you know, you're kind of committed at that point. You're like, this is not boring. And it is absolutely something that's within, you know, at least, you know, my attention span to go in and do the work, the hard work. And, you know, you pour through the Mises and the Rothbard and the Hayek and the Hazlitts. And then, you know, your modern um, economists, you know, the great Bob Murphy is, I mean, he's amazing. And, I mean, to, to, to be able to, to stand in their shoes and kind of juxtapose like the Krugmans and then, you know, you get back into the Keynesians and things, you know, yeah. in history, you just, you kind of see it unfold and you're like, wow, man, this like, it's, it's incredible. And I think, you know, the, the last pillar for me in terms of um, the quote unquote institutions that kind of just fell apart because of knowledge that we were, you know, that was hidden from us, right? Like on purpose, hidden from us mm -hmm. um, by this aristocratic combination, which I have nicknamed the murder cult, um, was the church. And, you know, that's where a lot of people will drop off and be like, I'm not ready to hear about the church yet. But, um, uh, yeah. you know, like if you have your suspicions and, you know, you're looking for somebody who's done their homework, uh, Brian Moraski, I think is how you say his name. Uh, he wrote the immortality key and, Boy, I'll tell you what, you know, like for me, spirituality is a big thing in my life. Religion is mm -hmm. not, uh, but spirituality and the idea that, you know, we're so divorced from nature these days um, and things of nature that help us commune with it. Like, I mean, we ha we have these systems that, you know, uh, are open to uh, cannabinoids. We have these systems that are open to. Uh, psychedelics in general and you have an like you have systems in your body built in to react and commune with these things and uh, I think Brian's book the immortality key is one of those things that kind of like helped me unleash everything I was just like all right man uh, you know these institutions everything that we've ever been told I mean it's weird to be you know red pill blue pill matrix neo time yeah. but at the same time you just get to that point and you're like well, maybe, man, maybe we can do something better. Yeah. And, uh, your, um, you, you, you mentioned the anti-federalist, you have a series of that on your podcast, right? Where you, you, you talk about, uh, that is so, so is that I, I looked for it. Is it half of it on an, on like another podcast? And uh, the other half, it starts at uh, like in the middle, right? Um, yeah. So, podcast. yeah, I used to run uh, another podcast called The Rebellion uh, with my partner um, back in the day. And the the podcast, uh, we had some disagreements and um, had to go our separate ways. But The Rebellion, right. yeah, there's. So um, it's, you can cat, you can still watch the whole kind of series. Yeah, I think they're out there on uh, on the Rebellion channel. And if they're not there, you probably can pick them up on the podcatchers that are out there. Um, right. and you know, they were, they're intermittent, you know, like when, when, it, when we felt like it was time to 
plug some of these guys. Like we'd go in and we'd do about two show or two readings per show and dissect it and talk about it in um, you know, just today's, you know, atmosphere. Yeah. And boy, man, if like if you're looking if you're looking for some profits, if you're looking for so like I mean, maybe some of your audience has got, you know, this paradigm shift going on right now where they're going, yeah, yeah. man, like the government is evil and the corporations, yeah. they're kind of evil too now that they're going to mm -hmm. start doing what the government wants them to do. And the bankers have always been evil. Um, yeah. Go in and read the Anti-Federalists, man. They'll, they'll give you a lot of solace and the fact that they overcame a British monarchy and an empire um, should give you some hope for the future because, you know, it wasn't easy, but when people got more self-sufficient, and um, you know, we're tired of their their nonsense. They they threw those people off, and it didn't take a very uh, you know large number of them to do it. That's cool. Yeah, and I mean the anti federalists kind of like it's interesting what we've talked about on the show before is because like the federalists who kind of I guess stole the the term of federalism a little bit, right? Co opted the language again is is I guess what you touched on a bit there where like federalism in in its origin was more about like decentralized power, right? Rather than, than centralized power. And so by calling yourself federalists and pushing for centralized power, it's kind of, you're playing this semantics game, right? They, they, they did it all. I mean, that's the thing is you see this kind of stuff in history all the time, right? Like they're, they, they will co-opt a word and then bastardize the hell out of it. And you're just like, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, guys, like you do this throughout his history and, you know, some of the first um, some of the first talks that they did uh, in, in the anti-federalists, uh, it showed the exact same thing, not just, you know, language in general, but they talked about, you know, how they were driving people through fear. And you know, they, they, they were doing it back in then with uh, economic debt, with warfare, uh, not only with, you know, the debt and um our, our our countries that we owed it to like france and the netherlands and um or i should say the dutch back then but you know the the idea that you know like the the world was falling apart for the 13 brand new states and it wasn't like they weren't you know the the, the countries weren't fast to come after their debt because as long as they were getting paid they were cool and you know we were doing westward expansion it's not like the you know the native americans here were pushing the Europeans back into the sea or had immigration uh, under control. They had none of that under control. There was, you know, pro proliferation was going on, you know, um, like crazy during that time because of, you know, the, the industry that was here and the natural resources and the independence and the freedom and the passion and just the will to not be, you know, ruled by people. And so I, you know, to, to see how the, the MOs of these, you know, murders and thieves that make up our government hasn't changed. It's just like, wow, man, <laughs> it's not yeah. nothing. There's nothing new from these people. Yeah, they just they just hide it better now, like these days, you know, I mean, <clears throat> it's just under all of these layers that they've built up at this point. It used to be that there was just an empire and you could point to the king who was ruling over everybody. Right. But nowadays, I mean, that guy's behind a curtain. That's right. Yeah, they've hidden themselves very well and insulated themselves in, you know, what was it, the Rockefellers who were quoted as saying is, you know, um, if I print the money, then I really don't care who makes the rules or the laws, you know, and obviously more poetic than I just put it. But, you know, you kind of get that sense, right? It's like, is, you know, obviously Joe Biden's a Muppet and, you know, anybody that thinks otherwise well I, you know, I, I don't know but you know the, the thing is is you look at most of these people who hold an office and i'm not talking about like the bureaucrats right um the bureaucrats have a ton of power they're unelected they stay there indefinitely um they're almost as bad as in you know a government program and then you've got the people that we don't get to know we don't talk about you know and those are mm -hmm. the people that run the international banking cabals and i don't know if you guys have seen it but like to understand now that they're basically like well you know what there's no debt ceiling and you guys just yeah. print print all the damn money you want like what could yeah. go wrong yeah yeah it's pretty crazy um 
speaking of uh, what's going on, and we're Canadians, uh, so our lockdown situation is and vaccine and whatnot is pretty crazy. Uh, I'm not so you where you live. How's it? How's it where you live in your in your neck of the, of the woods there? What the mandates? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I actually I think it's fascinating. I, I would have not pegged you for Canadian French Canadian like uh, in Quebec. No, Ontario, but I am French Canadian. Okay, right on. And and what about you? Uh, yeah, well, well, I'm from the same neck of the woods. We both grew up together, actually. Oh, that's cool. So, like, I I have family that actually lives in Ontario, and oh, yeah. Um, right. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, um, I, I, if you guys are familiar with uh, Toronto, yeah, they're they're down off of. Uh, I don't know. If I should give their street name, but at any rate, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I lived I lived in Toronto uh, for three years, uh, so we we live close, like a few hours from Toronto. So yeah, I, I always admired um, the the Canadian culture uh, until about this past year. And, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah. like I felt bad for it because, you know, I've, I've, and I've got quite a few friends up there from, you know, the military and everything else. It's just um, to see what's happened up there with, you know, a couple of years ago where they're like, Hey, you know what? Guns are going to kind of be curtailed a little bit mm -hmm. and you're not going to have, you know, the same freedoms that you used to have in terms of like how you can carry them, how you can store them where you can be with them and all that kind of stuff. I was like, Oh man, that's real. That's like, that's serious. And like, yeah. what's funny is like my, my good buddy up there, uh, I'll just call him Brad. Um, you know, he was, he's, he's a libertarian type as well. Like, uh, I could think, uh, what you guys have the people's party up there right now. Yeah. And, yeah. um, he like he was like yeah and i was like well you let me know if you need a, a bug out plan but yeah man i live down here in north georgia and to to say that you know we really haven't suffered um like the rest of the world i i they can't um and that's the you know like if they think they had a hard time in afghanistan just come to the northern mountains of georgia you think you think you had it bad over there like yeah, yeah. these guys have machinery and they are armed to the teeth and you know, we're pretty self-sufficient up here, you know, and there's, a, there's just this culture where you live and let be because you know, you know, who your neighbor is and what they call the holler, right? Like on the next holler over, like those people are good people. And, you know, as long as they're not hurting people and taking people's stuff, I don't care what the hell they do. They can grow whatever they want. They can ingest anything they want. I don't give a damn. Just, you know, keep it over there or whatever you're doing. And, um, but yeah, no, we, we've seen, um, you know, some shut down in the very beginning, it kind of spawned my interest in running for governor. Um, I've kind of thought that this is that the United States is a post constitutional republic at this point. Um, more or less, we're a fascist country. Uh, very, very similar to Canada these days. Yep. The only difference yeah. is, is I think, you know, the amount of people that we have and the amount of weaponry that we can bring to bear. And it just, I think, kind of proves the point that, you know, well armed common people. Uh, is probably the best deterrent to outright tyranny. Yeah, and, and there's the other thing is that there's a lot of Canadians who are pretty uh, complacent about most things when it comes to government. They just kind of want to ignore it in mm -hmm. the, in most sense, and they just let it do whatever they want, right? Like, oh, uh, they can run that however they want, and um, they just go along. We don't have that revolutionary spirit as much here uh, at all and i mean that might be part of the reason why we're we're canada right like we never we never had our revolution right so i mean like we're still tied to the crown there <laughs> there's a reason for that right the people here don't have that same that same spirit they don't have that same mentality how do you feel about that these days guys i mean like seriously like thinking about a a person being a royal in 2021 where they yep. are like I mean, tell, tell, I, I, I know how I would feel about it. And I know how I would, I think you feel, but like, like, um, oh yeah. When, when it's we, like, uh, it's insane. We, 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 we've been doing the show often. And when, when we watch ceremony, like Canadian parliament ceremonies or just parliament in and of itself, how we do things, we always laugh at, uh, the, the, the they have all these weird rituals and these ways of doing things. The guy walks around with a big staff and they're all in these robes. It's and you're embarrassing. Like, what the hell? You're like, this is our government. Like, yeah. really? <laughs> this is so, who so I'm supposed to li li to respect and listen to. Like, honestly, it's so 1700s, man. And that's yeah, the yeah. thing. It, like, 
to sit back and be like, oh man, you've got this family that calls themselves the Royals that thinks they're still chosen by God. Like, give me a break. Like, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, they're all incestuous up there anyway. (laughs) Yeah, they are. It's just like, man, the the gig's up, man. You guys, you should have never let the internet out. You should have (laughs) never, never done that. Right. It's, and yeah, you know, maybe to a certain point is like, I, I don't know about you guys, but I am, um, you know, there, there's parts of me that are, uh, still pretty optimistic about what's happening. I, I'm not optimistic about the transition period that I think is coming. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to hurt a lot of yeah. really good people, unfortunately. And it already is. Let's be honest. Like, um, I think that for the most part, when this administration came out last week and basically told anybody with more than a hundred, you know, uh, people in their, uh, em- employment that they were going to start issuing seventy thousand uh, dollar fines against these you know these people that are going to work like you're you're basically saying that all right you have to do this or else we're going to put you out of business kind of deal yeah. and you know that kind of fascist tyranny I think is what starts the war and I've you know I, I've been pretty optimistic to up to this point but that's different. Like that's a different thing here, especially in the States where they get to tell people like you, you can decide who works here based on some new ridiculous edict from, you know, the, the president of the United States and just like, wow, man. But I I think for the most part, like I see it around the world in places that are unarmed. I see it, you know, from Australia to France to Germany to the Netherlands to Canada, you know, it, and really here in the states, we've been fairly quiet and patient and armed. I think it's a, you know kind of a place of yeah. you know just natural power. Where we're like, well, I'll go ahead and do something, right? Like you keep poking the bear in the chest, yeah. but you're not really that committed to really going after us because you know what might happen. So I, you know, I, I am optimistic to think that. I think a lot of places are going to learn the hard way, but I think they're going to learn. And I think at a certain point people go, yeah, you know what? Decentralization and nullification um, right down to your local level is really the best for everybody that, you know. Yeah. And there's some places, like you said, like nor I guess in Northern Georgia where they get that a little bit more already. And there's some places like Canada where things are going to get, have to get a bit worse before our population finally wakes up, I guess. Like we just reelected, the same guy, like, oh, a, you know, yes. about a month, not even a month ago, right? We just reelected the same guy who's been putting all these things in place. We're like, oh, you know, you're great. Keep going. You know, um, I, I and, did. And see, I did see there sitting was a- under like these vaccine passports where it's not just the businesses that are being affected, but it's like now the businesses are also being forced to check their customers vaccination status. Right. So now we got to know, like, Everybody who's coming in, you you have to hire a special person to like basically check these things, right? Like a lot of these guys, like if you're running a restaurant, you don't got somebody checking back status at the door, right? Like you 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 got to hire like security for that. Yeah, I mean, think about that too. Is like you know, especially with you know the service industries, like who who's employed in the service industries? They're kids, you know, they're yeah. they're, they're youngsters, man, and. You know, at the end of the day, like I remember, you know, when people used to check my ID for things, like <laughs> having a beer, right? And it's like, yeah, uh, is he going to check my status? Like he's going to check my ID for a beer? Because if that's it, then your compliance is going to be, you know, bottom, <laughs> bottom right? I, I, yeah. The other thing that's kind of cool, and, and I don't know, maybe you guys see it, is um, um, this this really interesting phenomenon that's happening where people are peeling off. Um, and when I say peeling off, it's, it's a term I've kind of started to use with, uh, the people that were supporting mandates for vaccination across the board. And, you know, it it was like, oh no, like when this comes out, you have to get it right. And then, you know, it came out and you had to get it and then they moved the goalposts. And so they were like, oh, two. So at, you know, when they said you had to get it, some people fell off there. Um, when they said you got to get two. Then some other people fell off. And now that they're talking yeah. about boosters every six months, yeah. some people are going, uh, no, mm-hmm. guys, like, I'm not down with this. Isn't this, this is not your original narrative? It's not that been that long that we can't remember. And, you know, the, the idea that, you know, we've got to wear masks or we've got to wear two masks, we've got to continue to wear masks. Like, uh, I'm not down with that either. Like, at some point, it's got to go back to being the way it was or better. Yeah. 
And I think, you know, I know they've let freedom slip a bit, but at the same time, those numbers where people are peeling off is they've, they're, they they got to be climbing like crazy right now. Yeah. We noticed that here, especially like the more they're driving this thing forward, the more people turn on it. And I guess that's where we're coming at. Like things will have to get worse, right? Like it's, it brings in a little bit of that, like accelerationism type of thinking where you're like, you know, maybe we should be pushing things in the wrong direction a little bit (laughs) just to see, you know, will there eventually be a revolt against Mm -hmm. the state? Right. Um, kind of brings yeah. in that mindset is that the best way to, to achieve our ends right uh, as being like against the state would it be to to basically just try to you know ruin it rather than try to fix it right so yeah and i think you guys i mean you guys have the same secessionist you know movements we have going on down here it's it's actually yeah. part of my platform for running for governor it's it's in the thing is, is i have no animosity towards the average american right like i I love my countrymen. I ran off to war because I thought at the time I was going to do something to make their lives better, to be safe, to have rights and things like that. And, you know, that obviously did not transpire. (laughs) Um, And, you know, here we are. It's just, I mean, I don't know. Secession is, you know, it's, it's the right thing if you can do it as peacefully as possible. And I think, you know, the one thing I talk about, because it's going to happen, right? Like the American empire, like we're no different from the British empire, which no different from the Greek or the, you know, the Phoenicians or the Ottoman or, you know, the, the, the Roman, like empires fall because they get overextended. Mm-hmm. Their, their, their only thing that they do is everything that every other empire does is, you know, slaughter and thieve and things like that. And it's time, it's time for the American empire and the lie that it was to come undone. And that's okay. Like we've got a little bit of a different backup system than they had, you know, even during the, you know, the, the American revolution, thank God. But yeah, this, this idea of secession, I know Alberta's big into it. I know there are, yeah. you know, Quebec has been talking about this forever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's like, come on. I mean, like, let's just, let's just agree to like, screw these guys in DC or, you know, wherever. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'll trade with you, Tennessee, you know, you can have access, you know, to our roads and to our ports and things like that. If you're landlocked, like I want, you know, I want the best for all of them. And I don't know, it's just, it's just gotten to that point where, you know, I think, I think 41% of Democrats over 52% of Republicans and most people who are yeah. libertarian were like, Oh yeah, come here guys. If you guys want to talk about secession? Like I got something for you and it doesn't have to be this bloody mess. Yeah. I was looking at those stats myself, actually just earlier today where, um, yeah, mo- it's, it's pretty much 50, 50, where like 50% of blue, 50% of red people basically want to just do away with, uh, with, you know, they want to split into red and blue nations. And yeah. so, I mean, if that's what they want, and they can do it as you say you know as blood, like without all the bloodshed then go for it i think and then from there i mean divide it up even further is what i'm thinking like we these large land masses being controlled all by one central power this isn't how we should be functioning ever so mm-hmm. yeah i mean the more we can separate it out the better so hey you want us you want us to secede i'm all for it <laughs> Yeah, are you guys um, aware of? I think it's uh, Switzerland in the, uh, the the Swiss cantons that they have. Yeah, I mean, really incredible. Uh, there's, um, I believe, I actually think it's the anti federalists that talk about a lot of this stuff. But you know, they they talk about the the history of the world and how it's just you know soaked in blood, and you know, you know, they, they glamorize the state and the generals and the the wars and things like that. Whereas, you know, the the, the really the, the successes in history are not marked by war. They're marked by times of peace and the, you know, the cantons and, and uh, the Swiss culture are really very local control. They're, you know, hands off from the state for the most part. And they've yeah. got a, a very high degree of individuality and freedom. And I think, you know, that's just, if, if that's not apparent at this point that, you know, if you thought about it and been like, Hey man, Really, if I had had to touch, you know, down here, a sheriff, I don't know for you guys, but what a constable or whoever, you know, whoever the elected executive it is, um, if I could reach out and touch him in, in my own city, I know who that is by first name. I can go and call him right now and be like, hey, Frank, what, what, mm-hmm. what are you doing here? And 
you know, if you keep doing this kind of stuff, me and the, me and the boys, we're going to meet you. And yeah. like, we don't want to do that, man. Like, let's have, let's have a better relationship. So much easier than, you know, even driving down to Atlanta to try to get into the dome to talk to mm-hmm. whoever, you know, our officials are down there. Like, I don't know them. I don't know, you know, who, or you even know. if you want to replace them in an election, it's a lot easier at a local level than it is at like the state or federal level. Like, come on. Yeah. We got right? a stop sign in this town. Uh, you know, even, even a former Marine that can only count to, you know, like 10 with crayons, right? Like I can count the ballots. In, in terms of local representation versus this, I don't know, this ridiculous, you know, 1970s technology machines that we have down here yeah. that have, you know, absolutely, uh, I, I guess, compromised uh, any election process. Yeah, well, we have our own uh, guy. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure if you've heard of him. He's um, do, you, do you remember his name, Carl, from Friendly Park? Uh, Gabe. Gabriel. Yeah. So we have a, there's a guy in Canada. He's uh, installed himself in Saskatchewan and he's, uh, his, he's got his own project uh, started up. Uh, it's a, basically a country club, but he's, he wants that to then translate himself into a, it's his own liberal libertarian township. And uh, so he started a, his own little project in Chile, I believe. And uh, he transferred that over in Saskatchewan. Um, so I know that, that we interviewed him. It's called Friendly Park. And uh, that that guy gave me hope for uh, for uh, I mean, just future, you know, just the uh, I didn't know that something like that could be possible until I I spoke to that guy. So that that guy gave me hope. You'll you'll have to send me his contact information. And uh, I think it's funny because I've also running this thing called the Helios Initiative down here. And um, at first it was this idea that I was just going to speak to. Uh, mostly libertarians who are running for governor across the United States, you know, secession and obviously freeing people. But then it kind of morphed into this idea that, listen, um, you know, if we can take the executive positions like mayors down here and sheriffs in your in your local cities and counties, boy, that changes the game very yeah. quick. And they can't manage all yeah. of it. They can't manage most of it. And so I've got this guy, uh, Steve Miller, who's a uh, who's another Marine. Uh, so we kind of speak the same language. We mostly grunt at each other and all that kind of stuff because we're cavemen. <laughs> and so we yeah, we had this altercation. When I say altercation. We had he his department pulled over uh, my my jujitsu instructor, and I happened to be on the phone with him, and we're you know good friends to begin with. And so um, it escalated to the point where I got involved and said, "Hey, man." Like you guys are pulling over people based on their skin color and using this thing down here called civil asset forfeiture, which just means we can take your shit if we think it's involved in the crime, right? And I was just like, and yeah. sorry if I'm cussing on a sure. No, no, that's fine. I don't worry about it. Um, but you know, we started. We had a, a, a meeting and very respectful. I said, "Hey, man, you know, because I understand what you know freedom is, and you understand what freedom is in your head, you also." Uh, are pretty serious about that thing called the constitution, which at least has some rights in there that we can agree on. And I said, why don't we put together a proclamation and get rid of this? If you don't like it and I don't like it, right? Like we're here, we're now the, there's no rules anymore. Face it. Like that right now, you know, the future is going to favor the bold who say, mm-hmm. here's the line in the sand and you guys over there in DC or Atlanta or the next County over, you guys can pound sand because this this is where we live. This is not where you live. And if you yeah. come here, then we're going to stand together. And this man here, this mayor, like I'm going to stand with him and I'm going to bring every person I can to back up his police force if he's doing the right things. Yeah. And, and, and obviously vice versa as well. We'll be the first people to check him if he's not. But to push that from you know him to the other two mayors in our county and then have it also pushed into the sheriff's office down here all elected positions of executive officers right and it's just like hey you know you guys were supposed to be quote unquote the third branch down here uh that checked the judicial and the legislative and if you guys can be that guy man i got your back all day long in fact when you're when it's time to go after the really bad guys the murderers the rapists the thieves the arsonists and things like that like i'll go with you I will help you if yeah. this is the kind of department you're going to run. So yeah, that's the Helios initiative, man. So like, I, I think it's, I think it's just one of those amazing things where we're about to have proof of concept with this mayor adopting a proclamation 
that's going to fly in the face of the Supreme Court. That's why. Yeah, that's actually a new that that's real again. The, it's these little pockets that kind of give you hope, right? Like it's that's what you got to hold on to right now, anyway. Because if you're looking at the broad picture, it gets pretty grim. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and take it from you know, take it from a guy that's been in some terrible situations in combat, mm-hmm. right? Like your best chance in all of this is stay the <laughs> stay the fuck away from these crazy people. You know, like yeah. there are some people that just want to go and they think they want a taste of what violence is until they have it. And then they're going to go and they're going to scream for their mom and everything else, man, stay as far away from that nonsense as you can. And you've got a really good chance of coming out the other side, smelling like roses. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, on, uh, what's going on over with you guys in Afghanistan? I, mm-hmm. I haven't been uh, keeping up with your, um, Oh Your man! Latest uh, podcast, but yeah, what, yeah. What, are you, what are your thoughts on that? The absolute shit show. Huh? Um, so a couple of things. You know, I'm not a I'm not a Biden fan, and I will give Trump the. I, you know, I'm not a Trump fan either, obviously. Um, but yeah. I will say, you know, I, I'm I'm happy he didn't start any new real wars. Uh, to to you know, while he was in presidency, and I, I'm, I'm happy that he tried to ease tensions. Uh, with places like North Korea, like I like really, hey, yeah. if there's anything that that man did better, it was that um, could he have withdrawn? Yes. Now, I will tell you guys, you know, as a guy that's been around and seen things, the orders come from the executive office, right? So let's just say I don't care if it's President Biden or Trump. When he gives an order, the journal says, yes, sir, we'll make it happen. Right. Hmm. And if he has any kind of like details on kind of the way he wants it done uh some guidelines that's it like the, he's and he's not a military man um especially biden I mean, he's a he's a muppet yeah, and a yeah. dementia patient right so <laughs> right like it, the idea that this guy blew the retrograde and extraction of american forces from afghanistan back to the united states is a narrative that propaganda down here is pushing all over the world the way our military works is you have a G four and a G five command staff at the Pentagon and the G four is in charge of logistics and the G five is future plans. These asshats have had 20 years to come up with a perfect plan for retrograde and they blew it and they blew it on purpose. Like, so Mm -hmm. if you, if you look at it through the lens of like, yeah, you know, you're right. You know, they had 20 years, man, to, to think about this. Like, this is who we're going to start with. This is how we're going to end it, you know, and everything in between. Like, this could have been flawless. Instead, man, it's, it's like they lit a bag on fire and rang the doorbell and ran away, right? Like, it was a complete shit show. So, um, it sucks, you know, it, it, the idea that we just basically gifted the Taliban um, a, I don't know, two trillion dollars worth of american money and guns and equipment and you know things like that and then at the same time in the same breath they're going to turn around and say hey you guys you can't just can't have those type of guns you guys can't have fully automatic weapons you can't have kids you can't have you know come come on guys like yeah i i think it was uh i think it was deliberate uh i think the uh you know, obviously the military is compromised a while ago down here in the United States. And, um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know this guy, Lieutenant Colonel, uh, Scheller, he was a battalion commander, Lieutenant Colonel who said, you know, I want somebody to, you know, answer for what's happened in Afghanistan. And they threw that guy in the brig, um, after going mm-hmm. public and saying that. So we, we know where things are headed with all these guys and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's unfortunate to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, the the war machine just doesn't want to stop, right? It makes it seem like they basically set it up for uh, a revival, perhaps, right? That's, you know, if anything. So, um, it, again, you know, that's why it would be deliberate, right? Like, they're the same reason that they fund the Saudis, who basically cause all these problems to begin with. You know, I mean, there's... Um, yeah, yeah wait- it, it's, it's all a game to them, right? Well- like, they, these lives don't matter. No, and they don't they don't care about any of them. And and here's the thing is in 10 years when Hunter Biden is president and we reinvade Afghanistan and they say they have all sorts of weapons there, 
you're going to like a lot of people are going to be like, Oh, whoa, they have that kind of stuff. And, and then there's going to be those of us that remember history and go, yeah. Oh yeah. We gave it to him. Got him like Saddam when we gave it's him like everything they were fighting us with now. Right. Like, right. It's like <laughs> all the weapons they were using against us now were the weapons that we gave them during the Soviet era. And everything, That's right? exactly right, man. So I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's predictable at this point. So, so they got an upgrade in their weaponry. They got renewed, you know, so they're, you know, a couple of years down the road, we go back and we fight them with the new guns. That way they're on our field and we get to play this whole tango again. Yeah. You know, you know hopefully. And, and here's the thing though, is I don't think, um, I don't think that gets to happen. I mean, kind of tongue in cheek with the whole Hunter Biden thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think we, you know, I think, Thankfully, the American reserve dollar is on uh, just its final breath. Finally, I think we've already depleted like 99.9% of its value. Um, They're pumping trillions in, you know, now, but every, like almost every quarter. And so, um, you know, thank God for blockchain and Bitcoin and all that fun stuff out there that maybe softens the blow and really removes the initiation of force um, from anybody. Uh, So, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to be able to do that in in the long run anymore. Thank God. Yeah, though, if the establishment's looking for like a long term replacement for the the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency, I mean, China's looking like number two right now. So, yeah, China's got its own problems, though. You know, with the with the collapse of uh, the yuan that was going on over there. Um, what was it, Evergrande or whatever the heck the, the name of their construction company was? It uh, wasn't meeting deadlines and getting paid and all that kind of stuff. Like, oh, yeah. the internal yuan versus the external yuan. Like, those guys are in serious predicament as well. And and here's the other thing is, you know, I, I know a lot of people are scared of, you know, imperial China and Russia. Mm-hmm. But when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, like their economy can't support those kind of wars. They can't support, you know, a, a sustained military action, especially on places uh, in, in the, the northern or you know, northern hemisphere outside of Europe. Like, yeah, maybe you guys can do some stuff over there that's terrible. But really, uh, outside of like a nuclear war, like what are you, you going to think yeah. about doing something here? I doubt it. Yeah. yeah, there's no. Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of that is again just bringing back the Cold War kind of mindset. You know, I mean, we're just looking for a new enemy to focus on now that Afghanistan's gone, right? We need some. We need to justify. I mean, upping the military budget every year. So, so. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and spend all of your uh, your fiat currency, fellas, because it's uh, it's going to cost a lot for a loaf of bread here in the near future if that's what you're trading in. And if anybody takes your money from the private sector, you know, private sector is going to get to that point too. Or like, oh, you remember when you guys told us that uh, we weren't welcome in your cities? Who who do you think grows your food, morons? Like at some point, it's like, no, you guys can stay in your cities, or you can loosen up and be human beings again and and embrace some humanity. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they have a choice to make. Um, do you think Donald Trump's going to run again, twenty twenty four? Uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I think he wants to, um, I don't think the American, I I, I don't think the American public wants him. I think, uh, governor DeSantis is actually, uh, probably the leader right now of, uh, well, the, the, the best prospect the Republicans have, because let's face it, you know, the the Republicans are just a bunch of wet noodle, you know, Mm -hmm. controlled opposition, spineless cowards down here in America. So um, they, the only thing that they can serve is what Democrats wanted to do five years ago and got done. So it's like, all right, guys, we're pretty um, much in the same position here. It's uh, well, that's why we have the people's party of Canada. We have all these, yeah. our conservative party is, is, is like, it's very it's leftist. If, if you compare it to your, your politics as well in the U S it's, it's very leftist. It's well, maybe, uh, you know. Well, it, 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 it might actually, you know, and that's the thing is a lot of people think like the American right um, is anything like has has some redemptive qualities, but it doesn't like rhetoric. Sure. Right. Like, when, you know, when the Democrats <laughs> are in power, they just get out there and they're like, oh, man, this is what's wrong. And this is what they should be doing and everything else. But when they're in power, you know, they take yeah. votes. They take votes just like those guys do. And they never stop a damn thing. I mean, these guys just basically rolled over and were like, oh, you guys want to spend more money? Cool. Um, you guys want gun control? Cool. You guys want to do, you know, all this spying? Cool. I mean, th- and you want to shut everything down? 
oh, no problem. And we'll be fine. Right. Like it was the Republican governors in every state. Yeah. They were like, you're locked down. It's true. Yeah. Uh, they're not, they're, they're not very different, but uh, that's why, Hey, I appreciate people like you who run for as a libertarian, they give, uh, they give options. Uh, you know, Maxine Bernier, that's our guy on our, on our end. And uh, just, you know, we, we need the uh, um, true opposition to this, to, to these types of people. Yeah. It was, was actually, actually pretty impressive to see what happened with Max and Bernier. Like he went from uh, like almost no vote. Like they had less than 2% support. Yeah. They brought it up over 5% now. They more than doubled their vote load. So they got about a million Canadians who voted for them. Uh, and that's while the media is going around calling them like white supremacists and Nazis and all this, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, just for, for telling people like, Hey, you guys should, like the government less apparently that's, <laughs> apparently that's yeah. a nazi talking point but right no and i i was actually very surprised to see uh that he was also french canadian like you know yeah. um he, to, to, he's a great order um you know i wish i could understand more uh like I, his french like he is yeah. obviously uh much more passionate in french uh, than he is yeah. English, obviously, right? And so, yeah. like, there's a little that gets lost, but still, like, his, you know, his ability to deliver and articulate the message of freedom, um, I was super impressed. And I was like, wow, this is going on in Canada? Because I, you know, until the election, I really hadn't heard uh, of the People's Party up there. And I was, I was sitting there kind of, like, smiling about it and seeing, you know, the, the advances that were made and the fact that there is a resistance in Canada. And on top of it, you know, you've got a guy who is, you know, most likely, you know, from an outsider perspective, if you had to guess from Quebec, which is not notoriously um, of, you know, what you would think of, you, you'd probably think that, hey, yeah, I can definitely believe Saskatoon, uh, maybe Edmonton or something, you know, out in Alberta. Yeah. Like, you could definitely think of guys out there leading that charge, but somebody from Quebec, like, you're like, yeah, this is cool, man. This is a really, mm -hmm. this is a, really it's a ray of sunshine yeah and i like his uh his his way to it his ability to communicate his messages but also his how calm he is he was he, there's a video of him I don't, i'm not sure if you've seen but he he got arrested in manitoba because he was going across the country just doing his speeches trying to get some uh some some supporters uh, he's doing his 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 whole thing and he got arrested because he wasn't following the quarantine orders right uh, in order to go across the provinces and he he got stopped and there's a video of him simply staying calm and and they ask him if he has a weapon he says only my words i have nothing <laughs> I have nothing to hurt you and uh and we, yeah so he's he, I, he's uh optically a good guy too he you know he's, he's he's doing the right things and we got the chance to interview him a few times uh, yeah. a few days also after that really happened, so yeah so uh, oh, he's, he's very he's very open to talk to, to to just regular joes like us on, on podcast he makes the time so these it are all things that because we had him on and then right after he went on tucker carlson like the next yeah. night we were like yo we were his opening for tucker carlson that's yeah it was awesome because we got him right after his arrest we because uh, we had actually booked an interview with him before he got arrested and then he was arrested and he still made the interview and uh, and we got to talk about about that, which is which is really interesting. Anyway, that's so, so cool. Yeah, yeah no, Max is a really interesting guy. I yeah, you know, and that's I, I thought you know I was like, man, how do I get in contact with this guy? Because you know, if there's something you know that is shared across lines right now, and I thank God for you know the internet, and Twitter Spaces, and everything that we have in terms of connectivity, because you're people are starting to figure it out. People are starting to mm -hmm. see like you know, like we're not enemies guys. Like I don't, you know, mm -hmm. like I I've traveled the world over and over and over again. And it's just like, you know, to try to help other people understand that, Hey man, you know, like I know they do life a little bit differently. Right. And culturally and all that fun stuff, but there's mm -hmm. still at the end of the day, like, I don't know if you guys have families and dads, all that kind of stuff. But like at the end of the day, most people just want to be left alone. They want to go out and they want to recognize some passion. They want to, you know, have, uh, you know, their work appreciated there and, and strive for, you know, just a, the best life that they think that they can have. And so, you know, to, to see that redeeming quality across the board is just, I mean, it, it's everywhere. It's, it's absolutely everywhere. And I was saying it the, the other day on my show, like I was talking, um, you know, I, I, during the day, I just put on Twitter spaces a lot of times and 
I'll get into a room that's, you know, the continent of Africa or Canada or US or wherever in the world that I can actually understand. And man, just the similarities and to be able to share knowledge and, and just talk to each other and be like, Hey guys, um, you know, I know our governments suck, but at the end of the day, it's them. It's always them. It's not the people here. It's not the people there. Like they, those people, yeah. you know, it, like we're, we're very, very similar. Yeah. And, and I mean, in a lot of ways, the governments are a cabal of their own, right? They work together to kind of control the people, right? Like these wars that they, these are all games that they play using us, right? Like they both gain from these things, yeah. right? Both sides at the end, when you're looking at it, both empires gain when they, when they have a conflict, the only loss is, is lives and taxpayer dollars. And they don't care about those things. Yeah. You can, you can uh, print, you know, new money out of thin air, <laughs> digitize money out of thin air. And obviously they know that we're going to keep making people. So, yeah. you know, they've got infinite resource. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, friendly parks in the chat, the guy I spoke about who has his, uh, his uh, uh, kind of a country house in uh, Saskatchewan. He's in the chat there, so, uh, so th thanks for joining us. He says, China can't protect its military beyond the first island chain. No threat of anyone except Taiwan. So he was just commenting on that. Yeah. Um, uh, I have, uh, I think I, I have asked all my questions. Carl, you have any more questions for uh, Mr. Um, I think uh, I covered pretty much everything that I was looking to talk about. I mean, un unless you wanted to touch on, um, like, I mean, criminal justice reform or something like that. I mean, that's always a good topic for me. Yeah, um, I mean, to, like, especially like the drug laws or, you know, I mean, when we're when we're looking at crimes that affect no one beyond yourself. Right. Like if you're looking at a crime that has no uh, victim, is that really a crime? Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've had to admit trespassing uh, could could be right. Like just the physical act of trespassing, you know, maybe a, a little more of a lenient sentence, um, you know, in, in terms. But, yeah, I'm I'm that's one of the, the big things down here, especially in uh, libertarian land is, you know, when we talk about, you know, we have a really awful uh, criminal justice system. I, I don't know if you guys know, but we like, we have yeah. more people and more people per capita locked up than any other country in the world, mm -hmm. which obviously doesn't scream land of the free. Right. And so yeah. um, to, to kind of, I don't know, our, our talking points on, on criminal justice reform, uh, getting rid of qualified immunity. Basically, you know, uh, a lot of the law enforcement down here can act with impunity uh, when they're, you know, out doing what the legislators and the judges tell them that they can do and they don't question. Um, then obviously the drug war is, is lost. Obviously, uh, a lot of our bureaucracy has been playing that side of it and been involved in what they'll call the black market, the the buying, the selling, the setting up regimes, uh, the transportation, the you, know, you name it, uh, all the way to the military for protecting <laughs> some fields in Afghanistan for designer drugs um, versus, you know, the the natural drugs down here. Uh, cash bail is a problem. Um, you know, it's like you commit petty crimes and they hold you uh, for in indefinite in time because you as a maybe not a a very rich person can't pay your way out. And let's face it. Do they let murderers just back out on the street? No, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, so cash bail is a, a big problem down here. Um, and just really redefining crime is just like, look guys, like you said, you know, let's sit here and we can boil this down uh, for Republicans and Democrats. Like you guys, I know we're astronomically different, but in, in a volunteer society would say, you know, like, I think I'm still going to pay for a sheriff, right? Like I'll volunteer some money. Yeah to pay for this guy if you know this is what he does and you know obviously um i talk about some good statistics going and he's actually doing his job properly unlike a lot of these people that we see around here who are just you know meeting quota by trying to get like what the next parking ticket or speeding ticket or whatever right they're like oh we gotta get we got we got quota to meet right like, oh yeah like, we busted so. these guys for drugs and guns or you know you're like guys those things are there natural rights when you guys are busting them? Like yeah, he, yeah. Had a, he had an unusual supply of, well, maybe he's got friends, you know, things like that. Right. And you're just like, yeah. So um, criminal justice reform down here is, is um, it's, it's mostly talked about by the other parties uh, and never yeah. done. Uh, but for us, yeah, it's just like, look, 
Uh, I can't sit here and tell you that the world's going to be perfect where you live. That's going to be up to you. Uh, but what I can do, especially, you know, if, if I'm a governor, man, like I can sit there and appoint the head of the state police and I can sit there and say, this is what we're doing. This is what we're not doing. And if people out there in counties need some help with their sheriffs or their mayors or places like that, because they're being abused, then by God, maybe that's what we're going to direct this to. And, you know, I think at that point, um, you start getting into that place where people go, oh, I really like this. I really like this so much that mm -hmm. I'm even going to throw them some money. Right. And so yeah. that, you know, that's the point is like, as libertarians, we got to get to that point where we kind of live by our own, um, our own ideas and principles. And, uh, if that means not taking a salary, if that means, uh, you know, ha having people, uh, that are pleased with what you're doing, uh, make sure that you have a, a decent living to live by. We got to live by volunteerism if that's the way we're going to be. So yeah, those are my thoughts on criminal justice form yeah. desperately needed. Yeah. hundred percent agreed. Um, like even just with the crackdowns that we see by the police throughout these lockdowns and stuff, like these are some pretty scary times and you think you start, you start to get to thinking like, okay, well, if these are the orders that you're willing to enforce, then what are you going to say no to? Right? Like what, what are you not willing to enforce at that point? So it makes, uh, we definitely need a check on those departments. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of where I'm coming from. And uh, yeah, it's good to see that like a lot of these things like uh, ending qualified immunity, ending the drug wars and the drug wars. I mean, now you're looking at like the, these migration problems on your border. I mean, a lot of the, the drug wars are what's bringing these things right to your door. That and, I mean, what the military complex is doing in some of these countries, right? So, Well, I mean, and you guys see it firsthand, too, now that, you know, uh, cannabis has been legalized across the provinces. Is you know, you know, it's not like you're doing a backroom deal, man. You walk into these places, you're like, this place is really nice. Like, it's yeah. really nice. The They're people upscale. Are yeah, I, literally. I mean, you like you're walking into a really nice place. I was up in um, uh, New Brunswick and went into a place up there and I was just like, cool, man. You guys got it going on just like we do down here in the States. Like, especially if you visit places like Colorado, like you just yeah. you walk in, you have a great experience. People are friendly. They, 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 they talk to you about, you know, maybe possibly some potential hazards on you yeah. know different strains or different types of consumables and at the end of the day man everybody's cool you're cool there's no shooting there's no yelling there's no screaming nobody's getting arrested or looking yeah. at each other sideways and that's really i mean that's what we're all about man yeah and rather than putting the dollars in the cartel's pockets like you're just you know you're, you our businesses should be the ones thriving right like it should be should be the people who you want selling these things who are selling these things rather than saying, well, no, what we'll do is we'll actually make the only market, the illegal yeah. market. Right. <laughs> right. Um, the, the guys who are out there like beheading people and shooting each other and stuff like that. These are the guys who we want setting up businesses in our country. Right. Like that, 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 that kind of thinking to me is just bananas. So, I mean, it's, it's good to see that people are waking up. It's good to see it. Like you mentioned, Colorado and, and I know Washington and stuff like that are even moving more into psychedelics now. Psilocybin, yeah. Yeah. Which is good to see as well. Cause that, you know, again, just opening that door to people, maybe, um, you know, freeing, freeing their minds more. I mean, even when you get down to the harder drugs, like heroin or something like that, if you look at a country like, uh, like Portugal, for example, where they decriminalized, right. Uh, did the incidence of use go way up? No, it went way down, right? Did the overdoses go way up? No, they went way down, right? They're way better off now than they were back before decriminalization. So we have all the, the proof that we need to dispel these narratives, but for some reason they hang around and, you know, that's because so much money, the, the people who run our, our nations and stuff like that, they're making so much money off these things and in, in all these different avenues, right? So. Yep, absolutely. A special interest everywhere. And, you know, what do they say is uh, when um, the industry, uh, is, 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 I don't want to ruin it, um, when legislators control buying and selling, the first things that are bought and sold are legislators, right? So the, <laughs> the idea that like this is, you know, ever going to change, um, you know, 
is not until we stop their their interference, their manipulation, and their involvement in our markets. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better. Well, I don't yeah, want to keep you too long, so I think we'll we'll probably end it here if you're you're good to go. And uh, yeah, hey, uh, um, tell tell my audience first and foremost, um, you know, where we can help you guys out at. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So we're uh, the the name is Chance of Flurry. Uh, we're we're on YouTube, but we're also on like uh, D Live and Odyssey and you know all the places that won't ban you because um, we do get the occasional trip with uh, YouTube, which we told you about last week. Um, certain things, you know, tend to trip, trip the overlords over there. So we've, we've got backups all over the place, but if you look up a uh, chance of flurry, we're on pretty much every platform. And, um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I don't know if you want to, you want to tell our audience where you're coming from and yeah. Um, my, my website is radicalpod.com. It is undergoing a little construction right now. So, um, if it's not there today, it'll be there shortly. And, uh, thanks to Natalie Bruno, the, 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 the wise, wise woman who's running as a libertarian, uh, for Oklahoma for, for helping me out on that. She's, she's awesome. Um, but yeah, uh, outside of that, man, that's just, it's, I'm on every podcatcher and everything else out there and trying to, uh, really kind of take down the system here. So I appreciate you guys reaching yeah. out and, and thanks for being flexible and rescheduling and just being awesome guys, man. Um, Same with you. No worries. We had to reschedule on our end too and everything. So, you know, it goes both ways. So it's, yeah. uh, yeah, it's great to just uh, meet somebody else who's kind of in the same vein. And again, you know, as we talked about with friendly park and all these like little pockets, it's good to, to, to always see these, these bright spots. You know, and, yeah. and you're definitely one of those. So it's good to get to have this conversation. You, you guys too, especially, I mean, um, blown away that I've got some, you know, one French Canadian and, uh, you know, another Ottawa one here that is just like, no, no we're done. So I, I think it's super cool to be able to do international shows. Are you, you guys, you guys my first international show? Oh, that would wow. be awesome. Are I think we? you guys might be my first international wow. show. Wow. Same. I've had, I've had some, yeah, man. Like that's, that's kick ass, but nice. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah. We'll have to do it again. Keep in touch. And um, yeah, 100%. You know, as, as things are developing and going down and transitioning, man, I'd, I'd love to talk to you guys again sometime. Yeah. yeah this, was, same here. this was definitely a great conversation and I, yeah, anytime. I hope you guys enjoyed that interview. Um, like I said, you can go out and support the show at patreon.com slash radical pod or Apple podcasts. You can find, merchandise on the website radicalpod.com it's got everything else out there um and you can see it is under construction a little bit uh things are getting revamped thanks to the great natalie bruno um did a show with her not long ago and she just happens to be a website uh you know i don't know extraordinaire for the lack of uh, a better term and i'm I mean, so grateful that uh, it just, you know, kind of happenstance, right? Uh, where, where our paths cross, and I was in need of somebody. I've been talking about this website forever, trying to get the right person um, with the right skill set on this thing so that, uh, so that we can get you guys more content. We can get you guys linked up with each other. We can do more fun things with merchandise and everything else. You name it. I mean, I've got so, I mean, the plans in my head, I, I wish I had more time and more space to do this kind of stuff. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, tune in later in the week, another uh, interview where we talk about family. And uh, I'm going to leave this um, kind of a mystery so that you guys come on back. Uh, it'll probably be released Thursday morning. So Anyway, I hope you guys have a great middle of your week. Until then, I love you. I need you. Peace. Um, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff.